I want you to imagine what the world would be like if certain things were only designed for half of the population. Whose job is it to fix this problem and take the other half into consideration? It's an engineer's job. My name is Olamide Olabode and I'm a mechanical engineering student. And from my experience, an engineer is a problem solver. My definition of what an engineer is and what they do changed when I came to university. I came into the realization that yes, engineering is about the technical knowledge, the maths, the physics, but it's also about understanding society and people and making sure that the products are, or should I say, the solutions that we design cater to the needs of these people. There's a concept called human-centered design. This is basically a system that ensures that when designers and makers are de designing something new, they think of the people they're creating for in the early stage. It might seem a bit outlandish, but even in 2021, things are still being designed without everyone in mind, meaning more problems are being made instead of being solved. The problem that comes when we don't associate or implement human-centered design at an early stage is that we get products and solutions that simply don't work effectively for everyone. For examples, we all use doors to get in and out. In the initial design of the push-pull door, both the push and the pull side had a handle. The thing is, when we see a handle, we automatically think, oh, we want to pull it. This is because we have a cognitive bias in our brain. That was the problem. The solution was to redesign the push pull door so that the push part had a, did not have a handle, so a flat surface, so your brain thinks, I'm going to push that. And then the pull side had a handle, so you're thinking, I'm going to pull that. This is a trivial example of how designers didn't think of the users, in this case, all of us. I will say that my university is doing some good work in training the future engineers like myself in implementing human-centered design in our work. A few months ago, I had a project where me and my team, we had to design a medical device to help people that may have arthritis. And we had an empathy workshop where I wore gloves that restricted the way my hands move. I couldn't move my fingers. Doing simple tasks like doing up my zip, writing my name, tying my shoelace became extremely difficult. And I mentioned this empathy workshop because it made me realize how important it was for my design to be used effectively by those who need it the most. When I was at a placement at an engineering firm, I was told a fact that buildings are literally only engineered for men. So since the 1960s, the formula used to calculate the regular standard office temperatures only uses the metabolic rate of the average male. It was only recently that they discovered that the average female metabolic rate is significantly lower. So this means for years, female wo office workers had to wrap themselves in blankets. They were uncomfortable in their office spaces. They couldn't pr produce as much work as they could because they were cold. There are many more examples where it's clear that women were not included in the design process. For example, Fitbit overestimating how long the average woman is on her period for. The example of the non-fitting police armor and the cold buildings all happened because there probably wasn't any or many women in the room. A survey carried out by WISE campaign, WISE standing for Women in Science and Engineering, showed that only 10.3% of engineering professionals were women. So that means only 10.3 women were representing the 50% population of female we have. With less women in careers like engineering science, Careers that define our society, our lived experience and reality are, ref are not reflected. I mentioned before that engineers are problem solvers, but how can we find a solution if we don't know what the problem is? If we want the problems that we're currently facing to be resolved, we need a diverse group of people to fix it because we live in a diverse world. There are many researches and explanations into why women are not represented in engineering fields. One explanation being that girls don't take the subjects because it's simply too hard. But I don't think this is the case because more females are taking core science subjects at A-level than males. And in said subjects, a higher percentage of girls are getting A-stars and A-grades. I think the main reason why there isn't a lot of women in this career is because there is little to no role models. I know firsthand how important it was for me to have a role model. This is why I want to improve the representation of women in STEM fields. Coming to university, I joined the Women in Engineering Science and Technology Society, West for short, at my university to support students in the local area that want to pursue careers like in STEM. 
We all know Birmingham is one of the fastest growing cities in the UK with so many initiatives and innovations coming out of it. Innovations like the HS2. With innovations like HS2, it's even more so important that future workforce is diverse and uses human-centered design. This is so that the new rail system is accessible and inclusive for everyone that will be using that service. To end, I know I talked about human-centered design in the capacity of engineering, but it can be applied anywhere and anytime you have a problem you want to solve. And here's how you can apply human-centered design. One, identify the problem. Two, identify those that can benefit from the problem and those that would be disadvantaged from that problem. Three, create a bank of all your ideas and your solution. Four, prioritize solutions that best fit the people with the problem and ensure you're working in a diverse and interdisciplinary team. Be a problem solver and not a problem maker. Thank you.